Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and today it's max effort squat day on my concurrent periodization. Uh, today I went ahead and went with a normal back squat because my lower back felt better and I needed to get something kind of on the board. I need a baseline to start with, right? Because I need at least current training maxes to work my percentages off of for my other stuff. So I needed to go ahead and see where my squat's at. Um, now, we know that I've detrained. We know that I've lost muscle in my lower body. I lost lower muscle in my body during a lot of that weight loss. I've been regaining a lot of it. Been regaining a lot of it. And uh, again, I lost even more as a result of that lower back pull, which I pulled the left side. And then once that started getting slightly better, I pulled the right compensating. So I've had to rehab all of that. So we're having to restart here. And the interesting thing, even though I'm at a lighter body weight, this is right about where my squat was when I started my Bulgarian last year, wasn't it? I did concurrent periodization. I got my back squat back to about 425. Because remember, I took a couple years off from squatting. And I hit a 425 uh, the week before I started my Bulgarian training. So that was my starting maxes every day. And I got up to where I was doing 485 every day. So now that we're doing some max effort work and we're doing basically concurrent periodization at this point uh, with max effort work, um, you know, I should be able to sell past that even though I'm going to keep slow cutting and slowly bring my body weight down to 200, hopefully by the end of the year. And uh, everything's good. So the 405 was really easy. So I went ahead and went to 425 and I saw, because I've been watching these through the camera, I saw just enough form degradation on the 425. I felt like that's all I can handle. Um, and I felt a little better because I watched a coach who's an actual friend of mine. I watched his training clips this morning and his thoracic rounding was worse than mine on a heavy work set, like a heavy triple. So I don't feel so bad about it. But uh, I do want to keep working on that, that bit of thoracic rounding I get. And that's one reason I'm doing the safety bar squats and we're doing the good mornings, right? Just to start keeping that in check because it's actually well within acceptability on that set but I feel like it could get worse uh, as I get stronger again. So I just want to make sure that I've got good thoracic strength and I've got to keep working on all that upper and mid back to make sure I can do that. Because that could end up limiting uh, my squat to some extent, even though my legs really are the limit. My, my quads are my limiting factor. Um, today, I tried to step up the, the deadlift because I needed to get my hook grip back above 500 because I've been working the hook again and I hit a failure. Like not a deadlift failure, but I just wasn't set correctly in my hook. I didn't have it right and it rolled out of my hands. And you just can see, you start grinding real slow. When you start losing your hook grip, you notice the bar speed slows way down. Uh, and for those curious, this is, this is 505, right? Count the red plates, it's 485 plus a 10 on each side. So 505. Uh, and you notice I start to pull, I'm already losing the hook there and it slowed way down and it just kind of slipped it out of my hands. So uh, here's the thing, you cannot, cannot do something like this and not get a deadlift. Uh, failure is not an option. That's a weight that I'm more than capable of lifting, even though I've detrained. Uh, there's no way my deadlift is less than 500. All right, I don't care. So I came back, reset my hook better. And again, it's part of it's just my hook grip's not quite strong enough yet. I got to keep training it back up, which we're doing with the, the speed days, the dynamic effort days. We're doing all that sumo pulling. That's going to help. So this time I got it, right? We got it but I started losing it near the top and I kind of set it back down right after the lockout. That's borderline making that lift. And that was purely the hook grip being an issue. Um, but at least I got it, it would count. So there's my numbers to generate off of. We're gonna calculate based upon that. We're gonna work with my training max being 425 on the squat and my deadlift 505. Yes, I know people are like, Jason, you've done a hell of a lot more than both those this last year. And that's correct, but I've also had some cutting and some detraining and I'm going to continue to cut. So we're going to rebuild them from there and we're going to use that as my baseline starting numbers. Um, did a three by three with my safety bar squats, right? Because again, where's my, my weaknesses? That thoracic region and my quads. Well, this hammers both. Um, and God, this is so hard on breathing, especially now that I'm going a little heavier. For those curious, that's 335 on the bar, right? because that's a 65 pound bar plus three plates a side, 335. For a three by three on a safety squat, especially one like that, that's a full 90 degree forward pull, it's tough. It's like doing a front squat. Like I would say it feels comparable to trying to front squat in terms of, of leverages, it's tough. 
and it's just hard to keep your air like it just knocks the air out like i've noticed on this one i do that little elephant sound that you guys hear me do on a really heavy squat sometimes i do it on every single rep on this and it's because the the safety squat it just feels like it just pushes the air out of my lungs because it's trying to pull that thoracic region over so again this is this is going to help me with what i'm working on on the squat plus i'm getting extra quad work so it's going to work that thoracic region really well and it's hammering my quads and again this is low volume heavy weight because this is a max effort day right that's why we have the the speed day and i'm probably going to do box squats this time why because i'm probably going to go ahead and for my next max effort i'm probably going to do a box squat next monday some people will say why and this is because i'm going to rotate back and forth on my max effort lifts right i'm going to rotate them back and forth same it's going to be the same thing with the bench but it's not going to be like Westside does it where they do six different variations in between um i'm, I'm going to be hitting my main lifts twice a month on a max right now the conventional deadlift because it's not necessarily a true max because it's going to be grip limited with the hook grip sometimes uh for now that's i'm just going to just pull a nice heavy single uh, but we're going to do a max on a squat. And so, and again, that max is max with good form, right? It's going to be max with good form. What can you hit? Um, then after those, those, I mean, we only did a few work sets, right? But this is max effort day. Now is when we throw in some cheek curls, do some abs, all this little stuff. And my volume is a lot lower on these days. And, and that's, that's the reality of it. We do, you know, one or two big accessory movements. And on this day, I can't get away with as much. I mean, realistically, hitting a heavy squat, a heavy deadlift, and then any heavy squat type work, even a safety bar squat, it takes a lot out of you. Like, had the squat been faster today or the deadlift been faster, like if that deadlift had been a lot faster, I thought about dragging my trap bar out and doing some trap bar pulls as an accessory. Uh, but I felt like I just couldn't handle it today, right? I felt like after kind of missing that one deadlift and then the second one being a little slower, um, probably shouldn't overdo it because again, I'll, I'll get plenty of volume in. We'll get volume in on the dynamic effort day. So I thought, let me go ahead and get my curls and my abs, right? Burrow it up a little bit. But these are core workouts. You guys got to remember these smaller movements that I'm picking the cheat curls. Go look at the EMG data. Cheat curls and those one arm laterals. This is core training still. This counts as part of my ab work. And that's the point. I want my small movements to still be core exercises. I need them working my abs, I need them working my spinal erectors, my obliques. Um, so I did four sets of these, and you'll notice I start losing a rep or so near the end uh, after multiple sets. And that's fine, it means we're pretty much getting to the limits of what my biceps can handle, and then I'm probably gonna do heavy pull-ups tomorrow, but that's gonna be very, very low volume. So it should be fine. Um, I'm gonna do pull-ups on my bench day. And that's, I like the way I did that. Uh, last week, so I'm going to go ahead and replicate that this coming week. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, the way I want to do it. I want to do a heavy pull-up because my bicep tendons can't really handle multiple days of heavy pull-ups right now, and then my back can't either, but I can do the rows for the dynamic, and I can go ahead and do a heavy pull-up on the, the max effort day because uh, I like that. I want to get strong at the pull-up. I want to keep my strength on that. It's a, kind of an important exercise to me. I just have to watch what my bicep tendons can handle, all right? That seems to be always my limiting factor. Uh, then to demonstrate some ab work, I went and did my ab work on camera today. I did a couple sets of it here on camera. Uh, again, not that complicated. You know, you just grab some bands, crank out something in the range of 20 reps or so. And what am I doing? You guys notice I'm standing. Notice my stance is very, very similar to my squat. Uh, more so on the second one. This one's a hair wider, right? Why? Because this is, is going to help us with our squat. And you'll notice that, again, using band tension, the way I have it doubled over, uh, you can't get quite as much of a range of motion. There's no way you can go all the way down, right? It's very, very difficult because the tension gets too high because we don't need to go all the way down, right? We just need my abs to be strong enough to help with the squat and the deadlift. And that's kind of where my range of motion is. So as I'm getting down into positions, you might be at, at starting at a deadlift. As far as the amount of hip flexion, I'm pretty much at peak contraction there. And uh, you'll notice that I turn my knees out and everything. I set, like this set particularly, that's very similar to my squat stance. And notice I turn my knees out just a hair, right? Why? Uh, I'm trying to engage the hips and the glutes. Not to train them. It's not to train them, it's to get the training effect of me doing 
this ab work while my hips and glutes uh, are contracted and while they're working. Because again, what are we doing with this? Is we want carryover. We want this to give us stronger abs and a stronger core when we're squatting and deadlifting, right? That's what this exercise is for. That's why we're doing this core work, is to give better stabilization on those big lifts. And so train accordingly, specificity of training. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.